Yes, we're talking about the PS5 Pro again, but this time, it's pretty damn good news. Yesterday out at the Blue Mark Cerny, the lead technical architect of the PS5 and PS5 Pro basically posted a 37-minute video um, talking about the PS5 Pro, everything that's improved about it, and basically giving a technical seminar, a deep dive into the PS5 Pro and the technology around it. We've seen a lot of bad news around the PS5 Pro. A lot of you guys have been deliberating on whether you should get one. Um, and it is Christmas. A lot of people will be getting one. We're literally six days away from the holidays, the uh, Christmas Day, a lot of people are going to be opening up their PS5 Pro. We've seen more and more games, absolutely tons of games getting PS5 Pro patches. Some of them have broken the game, some of them have, some of them have improved the game, mostly improved the game with PSSR, you name it. And um, a lot of people are debating whether to get one or not. And I think this basically, from Mark Cerny, is basically to come out and basically talk about, you know, talk about the upgrades, the improvements, and hopefully a bunch of developers will watch this and they'll understand how they can improve their games, especially for higher resolutions and higher frame rates to take advantage of the new tech inside the PS5 Pro. And also, we've got some hints about the PS6. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's talk about PlayStation 6. What, AM what APU are they gonna use, NVIDIA, AMD? I think you know why now. Anyways, let's get into it. I'm blaze to k Hit the like, subscribe, click the bell icon. Let's get Let's get festive and let's talk about the PS5 Pro. But before we get into the video, guys, check all the links down below in the video description for the best tech you could find hands down. We've got all the best tech of the year, all the best PS5 Pro accessories and PS5 accessories, all the best Steam Deck accessories, if that's your thing, and the best coffee ever made by mankind with nootropic mushrooms that just improves your health. And talking of health, if you want to invest in your sleep and your health overall, the best smart ring that tracks your sleep and tracks basically a bunch of body metrics for you, the Ultra Human Ring Ear. Use my links down below to save money right now. Click them, click them, click them. Anyways, enjoy the rest. Talks to address the elephant in the room. Mark Cerny's basically confirmed that the PS6 partnership with AMD um, has basically confirms the PS6 partnership with AMD in PS5 Pro Tech Deep Dive video. Flop, flation, flive, flow. <laughs> So Sony's basically released a new video hosted by Mark Cerny's place, or sorry, Mark Cerny, PlayStation's lead system architect, Mark Cerny, speaking to his ever calming dull set tones. Cerny's video is basically a deep dive into the technical side of the PS5 Pro, explaining how the new console ticks. It's an interesting video if you're into the techie hardware side of things, but a segment towards the end of the presentation is perhaps the most worthy of note. Cerny reveals that PlayStation and AMD are partnering on a new project Amethyst, which will see the companies collaborating on two goals centered around machine learning. Let's go. The first goal is a more ideal architecture for machine learning, something capable of generalized processing of neural networks, Cerny says. He continues explaining they're working towards a democratization of machine learning, providing developers developers with the means to utilize it for graphics and gameplay. The second goal is to create a set of high-quality CNNs, convolution neural networks for, for game graphics, which should be key in increasing the richness of game graphics, as well as enabling more extensive use of ray tracing and path tracing, Cerny says. Given the extent of this multi-year collaboration, this effectively confirms that the PS6 will feature AMD hardware. Was there any doubt? I mean, if 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 they completely bamboozled us with an AMD, 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 NVIDIA-powered PS6, that would be the end of like backwards compatibility on the PS6, right? They wouldn't be able to run PS5 games, PS4 games, all that sort of stuff. It would kind of suck. It would be like a brand new clean slate for PlayStation and a lot of people don't want that. People want to be able to play their old games on new hardware, right? But yeah, it's going to be running AMD and AMD well, AMD hardware, right? Which is good and it's lining up with a lot of leaked information that came out a while ago. I don't, I don't think this was in doubt. If it was in doubt, let me know. It's worth listening to Cerny talking about all of this himself. He begins talking about this project roughly 35 minutes in and let's see what he has to say. But first, let's read this last bit from Push Square. Top dogs, several publishers including Sony have spoken out about the potential benefits of using AI in game development. So it comes as no real surprise to hear that it'll be integrated at the system in some form or another. We're not entirely sure what it all means, to be honest, but we've we, we've no doubt um, more information will come our way as we age closer and closer to PlayStation's next console iteration. I am hyped up for the PS6. Let me know if you are. And that's where we ended. The one part of the presentation that I thought was interesting was them covering PSR. Now, we've done a bunch of videos on this over the past couple of weeks about PSSR, about developers implementing their new upscaling, AI upscaling technology that, div that Sony basically strenuously developed themselves. Um, separate from AMD's FSR technology. They went through the process of trading their own neural networks to basically create an upscaling technology bespoke for PlayStation games, and they ran into a lot of issues. Let's take a look at Mark Cerny's comments on this, because this is kind of interesting, right? Um, 
We also learned just how much work remains after a network is chosen. We did a lot of training and then did beta releases to select developers and got to see all kinds of issues cropping up once PSSR was actually integrated into games. And yes, we did. And required yet more training passes. Some of those issues were trivial. Like this one. We found out that one game used a perfect blue in its sky, and PSSR had never seen perfect blue in its training. It had no idea what to do with it. Of course, some of the issues we encountered were much more complex. Looking back at the four years since we started this project, I'm so glad that we made the time-intensive decision to build our own technology. So PSSR was obviously, like I said, created by Sony. Um, they basically used their own neural networks to basically train their own system for upscaling. Um, it is time intensive, and to be honest, they were using AMD's technology before, which is a lot more mature. It's, it's you know, AMD's been working on AFS, FSR for years now. It's something we all use in PC gaming. It's something that base PS5 has been using for years. So the decision for PlayStation to make their own, I couldn't understand it at first, but maybe they want to cement their lead in the gaming industry they want to make games that can only run and look as the bet as good as they do on playstation hardware and to do that you kind of sometimes need the software to go with the hardware right they make the hardware they and if they can get in control of stuff like upscaling and have their own upscaling solution they can really just have that it's kind of like apple right software hardware inter intertwined sorry i had to mute myself you know you can get some really great results um so really interesting and he covers that here results are good and just as importantly, we've learned so much about how AI can improve game graphics. Yes, we have. It can only make our future brighter. Now again, stick around because we're going to see what he has to say about the PS6. So that was the background and details of our improvements in these three key areas on PS6. Larger GPU, advanced ray tracing, GPU, AI driven upscaling, ray tracing, and the AI driven upscaling. And that basically sums up the PS5 Pro right there. Larger GPU, advanced ray tracing, AI driven upscaling, no CPU or compute basically, um, at least from the CPU side. A lot of games, some games are CPU by, uh, sorry, limited, um, but mostly it's the GPU that needs to be improved. And that's what he focused on. I'm going to restate those three somewhat. And then I'd like to take a moment to do something we very rarely do, which is talk about the future. Specifically, I'd like to talk about the future potential in each of these three key areas. First, there's rasterized rendering, by which I mean the conventional rendering strategies that were all we had up through PS4 Pro or so. There's not a whole lot of growth left here. It mostly has to come from making the GPU bigger or memory faster. Ray tracing is different. It's still early days for the technology, and I suspect we're in for several quantum leaps in performance over the next decade. Ooh, PSX, PSX. Machine learning, though, has the greatest potential for growth, and that's an area we're beginning to focus on. I think machine learning in this frame generation technology, stuff that they'd be using to try and make games run faster and better and look better at higher resolutions, higher frame rates on console and PC, it is early days for that too. I mean, I think a lot of the biggest things they need to get, the biggest hurdle right now they need to get over is basically input delay, input lag. You know, being able to press a button and get an action on screen that, you know, in response to what you pressed, that there's kind of a lag there right now with a lot of this upscaling frame gen technology. Um, they definitely need to get like the latency down massively on that. They need to have this thing, the systems, you know, just fast, have them be faster and the input latency just crank it down because I hate input latency. It's a big reason why I don't like cloud gaming. Um, so having that on local systems now, it feels silly and annoying and frustrating. And we saw back with Wukong suffer pretty heavily with that on the PlayStation. Um, then with their frame gen technology, it, it sucked from what I saw in the comments. We covered it in a couple of videos and a lot of you guys came and commented and said, yeah, when I press the button, it feels like it takes half a second to respond. Nobody wants that experience. I mean, we, we expect that on cloud gaming, right? Cloud streaming, but not on games that are running on the hardware, right? And we shouldn't have to. Anyways, let's get back to the video. Some of that growth in machine learning will come from more performant and more efficient hardware architectures. The ML architecture in PS5 Pro yep. is quite good, but we did not, in fact, achieve that holy grail of a fully fused network when running PSSR. It's close, but PSSR can't quite keep all of its intermediate data on chip and therefore does, to some degree, bottleneck on system memory access. We see definite room for improvement in future ML hardware. An additional source of future growth will come from more sophisticated neural networks. When fewer higher quality pixels are combined with the right neural network, the result is richer graphics. 
One way to look at this is supportable upscaling rate. I, I love how like they're really diving deep into like focusing on the pixels and just stretching, like just making, just putting, really trying to optimize every little pixel of the game now, you know, trying to condense pixels, upscale, fill in all the missing blanks and stuff like that to basically allow and make possible, you know, high resolution gaming like 8K gaming. It's 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 fascinating kind of seeing the detail that they're going into when whilst talking about this and the improvements that they're making on the hardware and software level with AI and this neural network stuff, it's crazy. If we're able to create quality imagery with a two to one upscale, and can then improve the neural network and reach the same image quality with a three to one upscale, then the effective power of the GPU has roughly doubled. And that stacks on top of whatever is being done to speed up rasterized rendering or ray tracing. There's enormous potential here. Not we also hope to be heading towards multiple uses of these CNNs within a frame, not just super resolution, but also some of the other targets I was talking about, such as the denoising that's needed when doing optimized ray tracing. Through PS5 Pro, we've developed some good understanding of hardware design for machine learning, as well as neural network design. Can Get we ready, because we're about to talk about the PS6 here. PS6, continue come on, Mark. The pin Spit it out. Design. Spit it out, Mark. Of course, as part of their broader strategy, AMD is pursuing many of the same goals. And so I have some very exciting news to share. Here we go. We have begun a deeper collaboration with AMD. For the project name, we're taking a hint from AMD's Red and PlayStation's Blue. The code name is Amethyst. Amethyst, too. With Amethyst, Ooh. we've started on a long journey and are combining our expertise with two goals in mind. The first goal is a more ideal architecture for machine learning, something capable of generalized processing of neural networks, but particularly good at lightweight CNNs needed for game graphics, and something focused around achieving that holy grail of fully fused networks. In going after this, we're combining the lessons AMD has learned from its multi-generation RDNA roadmap and SIE has learned from the custom work in PS5 Pro. But ML use in games shouldn't and can't be restricted to graphics libraries. We're also working towards a democratization of machine learning, something accessible that allows direct work in AI and ML by game developers, both for graphics and for gameplay. Amethyst is not about proprietary technology for PlayStation. In fact, it's the exact opposite. Through this technology collaboration, we're looking to support broad work in machine learning across a variety of devices. The other goal is to develop, in parallel, a set of high-quality CNNs for game graphics. Both so Project Amethyst is basically working together with AMD, combining their expertise to basically, basically improve machine learning and optimize upscaling and stuff like that technology for ongoing future PlayStation projects, AKA PlayStation 6. AMD will independently have the ability to draw from this collection of network architectures and training strategies. And these components should be key in increasing the richness of game graphics, as well as enabling more extensive use of ray tracing and path tracing. We're looking forward to keeping you posted throughout what we anticipate to be a multi-year collaboration. Let me get back to PS5 Pro for one final moment. You've now heard a bit about our fairly intense last few years building this console and developing PSSR. There's been so much learning for us as we delve into these new technologies. But the payoff, as I said in my PS5 tech video a few years back, is in the games. And by now we know to expect the unexpected. It's an absolute guarantee that the development community will grab a hold of this technology and move in a direction that we never could have anticipated. Personally, I can't wait to see what they do with it. Thank you for your time today. You're welcome, Mark Cerny. It's always a pleasure. PlayStation. Anyways, let me know what you think in the comment section. Sorry, the video stretched out to 40 minutes. I just wanted to hear what Mark Cerny said there at the end about their new project in collaboration with AMD, how machine learning and upscaling technology like PSSR all factors in game graphics, resolutions, frame rates, and PSSR upscaling and machine learning and how AI factors into all that and potentially how it factors into the PlayStation 6. So they've all already identified a lot of bottlenecks they've incorporated machine learning into the ps5 pro i think the ps5 pro from what i'm understanding from what it seems like to me now is that it wasn't 
a money grab like a lot of people thought it was. It was a kind of test bed to test out all this new technology. They're really going to be using the PS5 Pro to basically refine this technology, improve upon it, do a lot. You know, basically, we're all kind of beta testing it right now. We're getting a sample of all this new tech in the PS5 Pro. Um, and all of that data that they collect, all the information they collect, the lessons that they learn, they're going to be feeding all that and implementing that into the new PlayStation, uh, PlayStation 6, the PS6. And I think ultimately that's going to be awesome. It's going to be freaking awesome. Um, no doubt they're already working on the PS6. I'm sure they've maybe got the design. They've got a lot of, you know, conceptual um, concept units out, maybe. Um, prototypes where they're working on the design. I'm excited to see the new design. I hope it's not the same as the PS5. I don't think any console generation should, you know, look the same as the one before it. I am excited for the PS6. Let me know if you are. And if let me know if you're excited for the PS5 Pro because it's going to be getting this technology now and it's going to be getting better on the PS5 Pro now and into the future. So, yeah, it's it's a fun time to be a PlayStation gamer. Anyways, thank you for watching. Check out the links down below in the video description for some really cool tech, tech stuff um playstation stuff you name it um and i'll be updating it all the time so check back on it bookmark it i click the heart button on amazon and um have a happy holidays all right it's six days till christmas i'm excited hopefully you are hopefully you're cozy you're safe you're having a good time and you're getting ramped up for the holidays but if you're spending it with family or spending it on your own come subscribe click the like button subscribe click the bell icon for news come join me on stream every day around lunchtime central time between 12 and 3 p.m central time um i'll be streaming pubg I'll be streaming Stalker 2, different games here and there. So come join me. Anyways, peace out. I love you. Merry Christmas. Stay safe. I'll see you in the next one. I'm Blaze2K. Bye. Let's go.